through propulsion physics, anti-gravity. What's your vision in the bifurcation of those two kinds of portfolios? Well, we don't spend a ton of time on new physics. Um, I, mean, the, I think with, with current physics, uh, there's, there's huge potential. Um, so rather than rely on a breakthrough, which we, you know, really it's difficult to envision what that breakthrough would exactly be, um, or even inexactly be. Um, the, I, I'm quite confident that with what we know of current physics, sort of just going with the kind of you know, where the standard model of physics is today, that there are dramatic improvements possible in space flight. Um, and I think with the, you know, certainly with, with Falcon 9, I think we can make improvements. And then with our next generation rocket system, which is still you know, many years away, that'll be um, a, a deep cryo methalox system. Um, I, think, I think we can achieve full reusability. Um, and that, that's really, that's a, that's a huge potential for, um, you know, like maybe a, a two order of magnitude reduction in the cost of space flight. Um, so um, as far as R&D is concerned, like we, 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 we hire great engineers as fast as we can find them. Um, so it's like the, it's not that easy to find, or I should say great engineers with the sort of like the right mindset and everything. Um, we, we hire at the, at, the, at the maximum rate that we can find people that we think would, would really be an asset to the team. So there's no limitation on that.